Kevin G is one of those people whose name you probably don't recognise, but if you saw a picture or video of him, you'd quickly realise that you've most likely seen countless videos of him on social media, whether that be through his own account, or people using his videos and putting some unrelated caption over the top of them for comedic effect. What started off as a light-hearted joke and something Kevin could easily ignore, has quickly spiralled into a path of extreme vulnerability, with Kevin receiving thousands of hate comments, disturbing messages, and people mocking him on every single one of his posts. This has forced him to make videos with his parents explaining his situation and his disability, as well as crying his eyes out, begging people to stop making fun of him. And the people who reported me. Why me? I already had a hard enough life as it is. But this is the only place where I can have friends and share what I do and build Legos and just have fun. I tried fitting in with other kids. That didn't work. I was a black sheep then, and I'm still a black sheep now. I just want to say I hope you're happy that you were finally able to ruin my vacation, my holiday. I just hope you feel good about yourself that you were able to do this to me. But my question is, why me? What did I ever do to you? Do you just want me to like hide in the shadows and disappear and just pretend like I'm not there? Even after all of this, the number of videos have multiplied by an insane amount and the constant barrage of negative comments hasn't stopped. But was Kevin's online career always this way? And if it wasn't, when was the turning point that brought all of this negative attention? To understand that, we have to go back to the creation of his account, and the very early days of his social media presence. If you've never heard of him, I'll quickly summarise who he is. Kevin Gabor is an 11-year-old kid from Romania, now living in the US, who suffers from brittle bones disease, which means he can't do any exercise at all, has had to have metal rods in his arms and legs and can't experience nearly as much as what other kids are able to do. He's actually really well spoken and wise for his age and tries not to think about the negatives that come with his condition. As an alternative form of social interaction due to his inability to go outside and play or make friends, his parents decided to set up and manage a TikTok account for him to try and form a community. This originally started with him building Lego, doing toy reviews, or just playing with toys. Before the extreme attention, people would be saying how toy companies should sponsor him because of how engaging he is to listen to, and that he would be putting a smile on their faces since he was so wholesome and happy. Things would seemingly stay this way up until June 2023, which is when his content started going majorly viral. With his first handful of viral videos, the vast majority of comments would involve positive messages, such as hoping he had a good day, saying that they loved his energy, and that he's a sweet kid. But if you scrolled far enough, you could see that a wave of trolls and people antagonising him were already coming through. These negative comments were slightly easier for him and his family to shake off, because there were only a few out of the tens of thousands of other positive ones, as well as it almost being expected to receive trolls regardless of your situation once your content starts getting a bit of attention. This didn't stop Kevin though. He remained in high spirits and continued building his Lego sets and doing his toy reviews. But the severe trolling and just unnecessary comments didn't stop at all. In fact, they got a whole lot worse. People would go on to an alternative account or an account that didn't have any correlation to their personal information and write things like, I absolutely hate this kid, this kid drives me insane, as well as leaving sexualized comments, which is disgusting. Some of his videos would be taken extremely out of context and put into some light-hearted memes, but others, again, would be made into sexualized jokes, which just shouldn't happen to someone his age. The constant wave of negative or weird comments absolutely flooded his TikTok account, and then had shallow people all pledging to come together and try and get his account banned. This caused him to make a sit-down video where Kevin would ask the trolls why they are picking on him, as well as the fact that they should feel ashamed because this is his only way of having somewhat of a social interaction and people to talk to. The video ended up with Kevin in floods of tears and mentioning that creating content was one of the main things that takes his mind off of all the struggles he has to face in the real world. Why are you 
is some of you guys trying to get me banned on TikTok. I don't understand. I did nothing wrong to you. You, I, you know that I can't play. I can't run. I, I can't hang out with friends outside. I can't do a bunch of stuff because I could break something. And I'm just. I have an online community that I can share and have friends with. And you're trying to take that away from me. This isn't fair. As you could have probably guessed. The video also got memed to absolute oblivion, totally disregarding his feelings and in turn making him even more vulnerable online than he already was. By this point, positive and wholesome comments were becoming harder to find on any video of his by the minute. Kevin eventually reached the 1 million follower milestone and shortly after decided to release merchandise that had been planned for this scenario. This would be around the time that the negativity and trolling peaked. People would be shocked at the prices of the items, with hoodies being around $70 and backpacks for around $50, leaving comments like, no one's paying $70 for a hoodie little bro, or discussions in the comments surrounding why all the prices are so high. This of course sparked questions being asked about his parents and where all of the money from the sales would be going to if someone bought an item from his store, as well as hoping that they weren't putting their son's vulnerability online to make him a cash cow for their personal gain. The comments on his videos were getting more and more vulgar, especially with any video of him crying. This situation didn't look like it was getting any better, but he did eventually get a huge number of people fighting his corner, because they knew enough was enough, and this wasn't fair on a little kid. The light-hearted memes were fine, like him singing Sunflower and being placed into relatable gaming situations. It was the comments and videos that weren't safe for work, which had people replying to these comments, saying that they should be ashamed of hiding behind a faceless account, picking on an 11 year old innocent kid. Now this is the part that I don't understand at all. Instead of banning the accounts of all the trolls and accounts using his videos in a grim way, TikTok decided to permanently ban Kevin's account because of a mass ban exploit his so called haters were all doing. TikTok couldn't have even banned him for their policy of having to be 13 or older to have an account, because it was his parents that were managing his page. In the grand scheme of things, it meant that constantly antagonising and harassing someone on the app won't get you banned, but if you make videos of yourself building Lego or asking people to stop making fun of you, you will indeed get banned. Fast forward to now, him and his family have decided to create a new account to try and rebuild the positive part of the community that Kevin had. His content has differentiated slightly, and he's now recording his experience of travelling around Europe with his parents. Also, on a high note, since his return, it seems like any hate comments are nowhere to be seen. Now that could just be because of his parents potentially deleting comments or blocking accounts, but I like to think that the people who got his main account banned actually feel guilty and have stopped targeting a little kid who should have never been targeted in the first place.